Thanks for tuning in on today. I'm Pastor Star, pastor of the Faith City Christian Center here at 2500 South 44th Street, Kansas City, Kansas. On today, we have an awesome word for you today. So we want you to just uh, get relaxed, get comfortable, and receive this word that God has for your heart. Hallelujah. 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 There needs to be a release in this place. Because today I feel like in my spirit man that I'm carrying the weight of many so that tells me that somebody in this place you just need to get it off your chest spiritually I don't know what you're going through but as your man of God I feel a heaviness in this place and until you give it to God until you let go until you release it and know that there is healing in the atmosphere then that heaviness will continue to attach itself to you like a leech. You have to lay aside every weight, every weight, every weight, every weight, sorrow, every weight, burdens, every weight, sadness, every weight, so that you can do what God has so called you to do. And you'll discover that when you allow yourself to be weighted down, then your praise is different. Your worship is different. Your relationships begin to change. But oh, when you say, God, I'm giving it to you. Listen, when you say, when you say, God, I'm giving it to you, it not only lightens the load, but it also makes you stronger. Is it anybody just want to get stronger? In order for you to get stronger, you got to start doing you some spiritual weightlifting. Meaning give that stuff to God. It's going to be all right in the morning. <laughs> Dance before you, Jesus. I've been looking for your note. Dance before you, Jesus. <laughs> Dance before you, Jesus. For you, Jesus. For you, Jesus. For you, Jesus. Yeah. 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 I'm for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody needed that. Hallelujah. Somebody needed that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, just hug yourself. Hug yourself. Tell yourself, self, it's going to be all right. <laughs> See, because sometimes, hear me, hear me now, sometimes you won't listen to nobody but yourself. You don't want nobody to call you when you're going through. You don't want to answer the phone. Listen, and if you still got a pager because you can't get a phone, you're looking at your pager, you just turn it off. Anybody still got a pager, we're going to pray for you. Amen. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Yeah, it's going to be all right. Say knowledge. Understanding, revelation is the key to my change. Knowledge, understanding, and revelation is the key to my forgiveness. Say, we are 
a teaching ministry. Say, if I am taught the Word of God, my life will change for the better. Say, if I am taught the Word of God, and if I allow myself to be susceptible to the Word of God, my life will change for the better. Say, for if I'm not taught the Word of God, my life will remain the same. Tell somebody quickly, say, let's get this Word, let's get this Word, let's get this Word. Let's get this word. Let's get this word. Uh, can we deal with this subject? Uh, there is healing in forgiveness. Can we, can we deal with that? There is healing uh, in forgiveness. Uh, uh, translation on the flip side of that if you have unforgiveness within your temple then you are sick if you have unforgiveness if you haven't brought yourself to forgive someone then you are sick you're sick and you need a doctor uh, but you can't go check in the providence uh, can't go check in to pay you. Uh, definitely don't want to go to, what's that one over there on Prospect Rescue or something? Who? Research. That's a place when you go there, they got to rescue you. Don't, listen, don't ever take me to rescue or research or the VA. And unless I got a whole bunch of time on my hand, don't put this on Facebook. Unless I got a whole bunch of time on my hand, don't take me to Providence either. You literally receive your healing by sitting in the waiting room in Providence. So it just take a long time. I don't know what they be doing back there. I, I don't. I don't. I stopped going there. I go to an emergency room that's not far from my house that. Every, I kid you not, and y'all know I'm in the church, so not that I lie outside the church, but I'm just, you know, you know, I'm in the church. Not one time have I ever went there, and there was more than one person sitting in the lobby at this emergency room. Now, I know y'all want my secret, but I don't want my emergency room to end up like y'all emergency room. <laughs> and most of the time when I go in there, if I had to take one of my children in there, we're the only one when we go in there. And they see us like that. Listen, I don't know emergency room where you could be in and out on the average 15 to 20 minutes. They're like, where is that at? You talking about you know where it is. You've been following my sick kids. <laughs> I know where it's at. So, uh, I'm just kidding. So, just in case we got some Providence workers in here, we love your hospital. We really do. Amen. Yeah, too late. Listen, we're talking about forgiveness. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, might as well shock you right off the bat. Uh, this is like, uh, what's them things, Minister Fern, they, they put on you? Fib defibrillator? I'm going to defibrillate you real quick, those that got fear of unforgiveness. And uh, uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, uh, what no one else will say to you. And that is, uh, when you are stuck and don't want to forgive, people really get tired of hearing your story. Tell somebody, that's just real talk. I mean, uh, think about it. When you are stuck and don't want to, don't want to forgive. That's a big difference. Don't want to forgive. People get tired of hearing your story. Whatever story it is. 
uh, uh, if you don't want to forgive, then quit talking about it. Just quit talking about it. Quit, quit letting everybody into your past misery that you're still making uh, relevant today. When you, when you went through it, all your hair was black. Now it's salt and pepper, gray, or gone. So just quit talking about it. Uh, you're really doing nothing but making everybody else miserable. Now, on the other hand, <clears throat> on the other hand, if you desire change, say change, understand that the beginning of the story will not change, but the end can. And it starts with you. Well, how do it start with me, Pastor? It start with you, number one, saying, uh, stating that, but I'm healed. Because at the end of a story, if there's a comma and in the word but, that's a turning point. It's an indication. It's a turning point. So when you desire a turning point in your life, the end of your story would end, but I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm free. I'm clean. I'm happy now. Then you'll stop telling that story. It will only be told for those that you need to minister to to help them get out of the same rut of telling the same type of story. So, 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 what I am imparting into your spirit is that change, say change, change begins in you. Mm. So there is healing in forgiveness. Can I show you? Can I show you something real quick? Okay, good, good. I, 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 I want to take my time. Amen. Got me a nice little clock. Now let me tell you a secret. This clock thing, so you don't, you don't be getting mad. You look back there talking. About, it's thirty-three minutes, dog. And then you be thinking in your mind, ten minutes that have elapsed. Then you like, it's only thirty-one. Pastor don't really go by the clock. I could be finishing two minutes, depending on what the Holy Spirit want to do. Or the clock can go to zero, and the Holy Spirit's still doing his thing. You hear what I'm saying? This just kind of helps me, you know, for all the viewers out there uh, in TV land that are watching us, BET, NBC, uh, 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 who else? CNN. They need some good stuff on CNN. Yeah, that's just all bad news. Amen. Amen. So, uh, now, let's take a moment and reacquaint ourselves with this word, forgiveness. Say forgiveness. <clears throat> Take a moment, reacquaint ourselves. Uh, can I just momentarily impart some free spiritual therapy into you? Okay, I like that. That'd be, that'd be nice. I don't know if it was the free part or the spiritual therapy that, you know, still would be nice. Now, uh, tell your neighbor, it's free anywhere it go. Now, listen, this is important. Uh, look at the mental and emotional disposition of an individual prior to actually carrying out the act of forgiving. Think about it. You got some in your family. Everybody got them. You know, we don't want them. But everybody got them in our family. People that just got a, a mean, evil disposition. Seem like they taking it out on everybody. They, they cannot even own a dog or a cat. Because whatever happened years ago, when they think about it, the cat all of a sudden looks like him or looks like her, and they get kicked. So they can't own a pet. Children got to stay away. So now, pre-forgiveness, one feels that a debt needs to be paid for something that has happened in their life. Wouldn't you agree? Now, there was a key word there. I said feels. Yeah. And feels simply means to perceive or to be emotionally affected by. That's why when you feel a certain way, it 
moves you. It does something. People use that word, and they say, you know what? You, uh, he had me feel, uh, just makes me feel a certain way. Got me feeling a certain way. They never really can uh, put some hardcore concrete words to it, but all they know is I feel a certain way. This just don't feel right. I, I feel a certain way when I'm with you. You see why I had to switch? Yeah, th- he said thank you. Amen. You couldn't, you couldn't fit in that illustration. Amen. So, so pre-forgiveness, one feels like really that a person owes them something based off a negative transaction that occurred uh, prior to that moment in their life. Mm. So, so when we forgive, trying to help you, when, when we forgive, we grant or we give or we agree to pardon to that person, meaning release them from the offense. Release them. Now, you're not fooling nobody. If you're talking about, oh, I'm over it, I'm over it. But you still can't be in their presence. First, first thing they be talking about, is George going to be there? Well, if George going to be there, I ain't going to come. You're not, you're not, you're, listen, you have not pardoned that individual if you can, cannot be in their presence. There should be something operating greater in you, especially if you say you know the Lord. So, so can, I, can I keep on going? So, so to forgive also means to give up all claim of the account. This is how you know you've forgiven a person. You don't even remember how it went down. You really don't. Somebody try to, uh, uh, the enemy try to get someone to uh, bring it back up into your remembrance. And they say, now how did that go again? And this is how you know you've really forgiven them. You'd be like, I, you know, I really don't know. It's been so long. That's when you know you. Matter of fact, next time somebody do that and you, talk, and you honestly don't remember, you ought to just start shouting. They're like, what, what you shouting for? I'm shouting because it's not in my system anymore. Wow. <laughs> so, so to forgive is to cease to feel resentment. You miss your blessing just because you're like, I don't know. I don't want to work there. I know they hiring, but it's a couple people I knew in high school that worked there, and I didn't like them. That was high school. They took my lunch. No, you gave them your lunch. To forgive is to cancel an indebted or a liability, so to cancel it out. Now, now Jesus showed us several examples concerning forgiveness. I think one, I believe one of the greatest uh, when he said forgive them for they know not what they do. That, that, is, that is to me one, one, one of the greatest uh, forgiveness that we can really, uh, that's on record. All the other things that went on in the life of Christ I believe that was the most powerful forgiveness because up until that point, the beating and the hanging on the cross, he hadn't experienced anything like that. And to be able to get to that point and experience that type of pain and still say forgive them, well, let me take you to Mark, second chapter, verse 5. Uh, I think I'm going to go King James Version. I'm going to try to get through this pretty fast. But it's, like I said, this is rich. And forgiveness is not something you want to run through because you do want people to be healed. Amen. You want to be delivered. Are y'all there? Mark 2 and 5. Mark 2 and 5. Uh, th- this story is by far um, one of my most favorite. If anybody been around me any extended period of time, I, I've preached this, I've taught it, I've talked about it, you know. I love 
this story. And that's why uh, I get choked up when I talk about forgiveness. And I guess that's why, uh, for me, I, I don't hold a grudge. It, it happened. It was yesterday. And I don't know about you. I don't read yesterday's newspaper. That's old news. So it's the same way with forgiveness. It was done. What am I doing about it now so I can move on? So that's why I get a little choked up. It would be a horrible thing to be in a relationship with somebody and they have they a grudge holder. Barely you husbands and wives. Don't Listen, I'm glad I ain't married no grudge holder. Not a grudge holder at all because that means I'll be getting some half meals sometime. You know, it would be a one-way, one-sided type of relationship. So you better be careful who you're interviewing or for the visitors who you're dating. Because uh, when someone holds a grudge, it affects the, the, uh, the healthiness of the relationship. So let me get here. It said, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sin be forgiven thee. Y'all see that? Now, now, he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, I believe it encourages us to be assured that regardless of the severity of one's condition, the Lord is able to do two things, forgive and heal. Because those things are inseparable. When you forgive someone, you have also, uh, healing is taking place. Now back in the day, what sign was that? Come on, y'all better talk to me today. So if you want some you better learn how to forgive so your healing can kick in. Y'all missed that. It's, it's, y'all get it on your way home. It's okay. It's okay. That's the sign language class on Thursday nights. You can come and be a part of it. Now, now let me show you a couple key things because I really gave you the meat of that particular scripture. Give me Mark 2 and 1 real quick. I want to show y'all something real quick. Mark 2 and 1. Look at this. It says, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. Now, I know that's probably irrelevant to you. It don't mean nothing. But now, considering the fact, going down to verse 5, uh, he healed and for forgave. But backing up to verse 1, it tells us that he's been here before. Now, go back up to uh, Mark 1 and 21. I'm going to walk through this because some of us have this issue or we know some people. We always know some people. It says, and they went into Capernaum. This is when he was there the last time. Y'all see that? So this, this, is, this is the time prior to the healing and forgiveness taking place. He said in straightway, meaning immediately on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught and taught and taught. That's why pastor put emphasis on teaching. Because that's what Jesus put emphasis on, teaching. Teaching uh, changes lives. It saves uh, souls. Uh, uh, you cannot hide from being taught unless you're not present and paying attention. Give me 22. 22 says, 22 says, and they were astonished at his doctrine. For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. His teaching was anointed. <laughs> his teaching was anointed. It, it, his teaching had some um, power. Teaching had some power. And you know when teaching has power because when you pay attention and you apply what's been taught and your life begins to change, that confirms that the teaching has power. Give me 23. 
23 says, And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean what? Spirit. And he cried out. Mm, hold on. Stay right there. And there was in their synagogue in the church. Y'all see that? So when people talk about, well, it's just hypocrites at the church. I'm not going to church. Well, okay, I, I agree with you according to this scripture. Yeah, everybody in church is not quite right. That, but that's why we want them to come to church. So, amen. Amen, somebody. I know some people in there, but Pastor, I don't want to be sitting by somebody that's not quite right. Yeah, you was like that before, and I'm sure they thought the same thing about you. But it says, and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. See how the devil could use you? Make you look comfortable in this place. Look like everybody else. But oh, if you get an opportunity to open your mouth. 24. And it says, saying, let us alone. When you are teaching the word of God and you're not sugarcoating it, then guess what? There should be somebody that's not quite right getting a little uncomfortable. I wouldn't want to go to a church if I know I'm living a ratchet life and I'm not disturbed at all. Just so comfortable. Just come up in here off of any kind of thought, off of any kind of night, any kind of lifestyle, and never get convicted. That's a problem. You're wasting your time at that church. That's a community center. It's not a church. Now, you say, well, Pastor, you judging. I'm just telling you what the Scripture's saying. Saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth. The devil know. He know who he dealing with. He try to fool us when he's using us as a vehicle to, to act like we don't know him. But the devil know. You see how he called him out? Now, I want you to just keep that in your spirit. I'm going to get back to that. Let's that's, that's say verse 24. Say verse 24. Okay. He said, he said uh, Thou Jesus of Nazareth, art thou come to destroy us? The devil know. He's not welcome, not only in the building, but in your temple, most importantly. He said, I know thee. You see that? Who thou art, the Holy One of God. Y'all see that? <laughs> Give me 25. He said, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold thy peace, and come out of him. 26. Now look right here. And when the unclean spirit had torn him, I'm going to preach about that one day, exit wounds. Torn him and cried with a loud voice. He making noise on his way out. Ain't that just like people? When they leave and they mad, they slamming stuff, and they doing all this cussing and all that. Y'all see where, where it comes from, where the root cause is? You know, they know the relationship is over. The relationship, oh, y'all see, you got to, they know the relationship is over. But they want to make an exit wound. They want everybody around you to know. <laughs> he said, cry with a loud voice. And then listen, he came out of him because when God says you got to go, Now, give me 27. Now, 27 says, And they were all amazed, insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? Y'all see how church people can be? 
now, 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 let me get to the good part. It said, what new doctrine is this? Mm. For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit, and they do obey him. Sound like to me they don't know him. But give me 24 again. Ain't that the verse I told y'all? Back up 24. The, the demon, the devil, the evil spirit said, let us alone. Listen, thou Jesus of Nazareth, I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. So why is it that the church people didn't recognize? Twenty-six, seven, eight. Okay, he said, and immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. Listen, when we coming to do more than just do church, then it's gonna be some change. And guess what? When it's some change, everybody know that it's some change. Because those that are around you, even though they don't come to this house with you, they know that something must be going on at this house that's uh, affecting your life in such a way that it starts to affect everyone else's life. And when you know that you know that you know that what you're getting is good, give me verse 1 in chapter 2 again. When you know that you know that it is good, look at what happened. Come here. Come on now. It said, and it was noised <laughs> that he was in the house. That's what happens. It was noise. Ooh, girl, I'm telling you, you got to get this word at Faith City Christian Center. Your Facebook page would say, man, I've been blessed today by the word of God at Faith City Christian Center. Your tweet would say free spiritual therapy, 2500 South 44th Street. Because it was noise. If you're not making any noise, I question where is the change. He said that he was in the house. Two. Rush through this. I'm trying to get to He said that straightway, immediately, many were gathered. When we make noise, y'all see some empty seats in here? When we make noise, there's no empty seats. Today we don't have children's church, and the nursery's not available today because we're building up the staff. But if the children were in children's church, that's even more empty seats in the adult setting. So that tells me that we need to make some what? Okay. So now it says they were gathered together in so much that there was no room packed out just like the club I used to say the ep but I drove down truce the other day and I didn't see the ep anymore why y'all let me keep saying the ep it don't even exist do it it do I knew we had some people going they're like yes it do pastor <laughs> Tuesday night ladies night <laughs> I said I'm a good <laughs> <laughs> it said there's so much there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. You couldn't even get in. That's how God's house should be. How many of y'all have somebody spiritually sick in your family? Spiritually sick? Okay. How many, how many of y'all, okay, let me rephrase it. How many of you know somebody that don't even go to corporate worship, don't go to church in your family? Amen. Now, the ones that didn't raise their hand, they probably ain't put much thought into it, but they know somebody. Got a neighbor or somebody. In other words, the house should be so full that they can't even get in the door. Uh, uh, the one artist came not too long ago. I uh, heard the place was packed. Uh, candy, candy girl people I, I know y'all know new edition they said the place was packed 
They, they singing about a candy girl who's not no girl no more because the song is old. She got to be a, a, a woman by now. But we're teaching about a, a Jesus that's sweet I know. Anybody know he's sweet I know? For the Bible tells us so. Do I need to help you, candy girl, people? Just like Candy. He's sweet, we know. Now, it said, and he preached the word unto them. Anything else set aside from the word hitting this screen is not going to help you. We are changed because of the word. We have to be hearers and doers of God's what? Word. Okay, now give me verse 3. I got to get through this. And they come to him, unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. He said, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered, just imagine that, uncovered the roof where he was. Your friends are desperate to help you. No, some of them be like, girl, I ain't got no gas. I can't get you to church. I ain't got no gas, you know. If, and then some of them, they just tell on themselves, if you bring me that red dress, I'll drop you off. Now, I thought you didn't have no gas. It said, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up. So not only did they take it off, they broken it up. It made a way for somebody else to come behind them. They wasn't selfish with the blessing. That's, that's another lesson. Don't be self, tell, tell your neighbor, don't be selfish with your blessing. You don't want nobody else to get a job just because you just got one. Don't want nobody, you want to be the last one hired at the company. You, you, and you know what they said at the company? Last hired is what? So you want a whole bunch of people to get hired after you. I'm just trying to tell you. So it said, and they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Now, up to the, the text, verse 5. Verse 5 says, when Jesus saw their faith. That's how we know you got faith. There should be some action with it. He said, when Jesus saw their faith, guess what? He said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Now, now, notice all through that text, it says they. They, 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 they. They come unto him. They could not come nigh. They uncover. They had broken it up. They let down the, uh, the bed. And then in verse 5, and said, and when, when Jesus saw their faith, notice the text doesn't mention his faith. Only their faith. Y'all see that? That's what I love about this text. So listen, before anyone can effectively uh, get involved, uh, you have to deal with you first. Don't have people getting in the middle of your situation and they, they're not right. I don't want you trying to lay hands or pray or nothing. You haven't been to church in eons and you want to lay hands. I don't even know who you're speaking to anymore, what God you're calling on. So faith and forgiveness goes hand in hand. Now, now listen, you want people around you who wants it more than you. And you know they want it more than you because their conversation will reflect such. They speaking doom and gloom in your life. Man, I don't know. You looking kind of bad. No, they, they need to exit your uh, hospital room. And if that's all you can do is speak doom and gloom, you just don't even need to go visit nobody in the hospital. Just, just listen. S uh, send a text message. Say, get well soon. You can't mess that up. You really can't mess. You, you try to type any more, you probably going to mess it up. 
get well soon because I don't know. So if, if you haven't gotten there, then you have the wrong people trying to carry you. And not only that, they're trying to carry you, but they're carrying you in the wrong direction when they should be carrying you to Christ. You, you need a healing, but they don't believe in healing. Mm, Jesus. You need deliverance, but their life has never changed. You need restoration in, their, in your marriage, but they've been divorced five times. So now look at this subject from a more personal perspective, and I'm almost done. Give me Matthew 6 and 14. I'm just do two scriptures. I'm going to let you go. According to the clock, I got four minutes. I just wanted to say that while you was turning. Okay, look at this. In the King James Version, it said, For if ye forgive men... They're trespassing. Your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Give me verse 15. He said, but if ye forgive not men, their trust. I, this, this, listen, this is so powerful. This is the most powerful part of the message. But if ye forgive not men, their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That's enough right there to make you want to forgive somebody. Now, go back to 14. It says, for if, if, meaning the possibility exists. If means just supposing for a moment. If means let's pretend that you're going to do this. Or let's pretend that you're not going to do it. So, so if you forgive men in the gender neutral sense, put aside every ill feeling that you have about this person. I don't care how many years it's been. Know this, that if you marshal up your energies and forgive them, then God is going to forgive you. And the truth of the matter is, You've been living all this time in unforgiveness and they ain't even thinking about you. They didn't went on with their life. And you allowing this to block your blessing. Well, what's my blessing, Pastor? He said, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Here's the curse, 15. But if you don't forgive them, and this is not... Well, pastor said it. No, it's in your Bible too. And it's strong. This is strong. This is stuff people don't want to be talking about at church because it's scary. It's spooky. It run people away. You mean to tell me if I don't forgive a person that God is not going to forgive me? I'm just repeating what the Word of God is saying. He said, but if ye forgive not, if you don't forgive, if you can't bring it into your heart to forgive. I don't care what they've done because it says trespasses. So they could have done more than one thing. He said, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Now, 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 so really when you look at this text, you don't even become relevant until you learn how to forgive. You're irrelevant until you learn how to forgive. Because if your Heavenly Father is not going to forgive you because you won't forgive, then you're ir really, you're irrelevant. Might not want to receive it, but it's good, and it's real, and it's true. So forgiveness makes you relevant again. I don't care what the affliction is. The truth of the matter is the lack of faith and unforgiveness is holding you back.
Forgiveness starts with you. Were you blessed today? Wow, what an awesome word. Uh, I'm sure that word that we received on today was a, a word that was so fitting for you in your current situation. But just in case if you're someone out there that you didn't know the Lord uh, prior to uh, seeing this word on tonight, I would like to take this opportunity to let you know that God is ever present and he's right here for you. If you are willing to give your life to him, he is willing to accept you in. All you have to say is, Lord Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. Lord, be the ruler, super ruler over my life, God. God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And it's just that simple in Jesus' name. So, uh, secondly, if you are in the area, if you're ever in the area in Kansas City, Kansas, greater Kansas City area, uh, our church is located at 2500 South 44th Street, Kansas City, Kansas, Faith City Christian Center. Our Sunday services start at 10 a.m. sharp. Our Wednesday night services start at 7 p.m. sharp. And you are always welcome to attend. For those of you who would like to support the ministry by sowing into the ministry, uh, we have online giving, easytide.com forward slash FCCCKC. We appreciate uh, whatever contrib contribution you would like to make if you currently uh, are in between places of worship and you would like to sow, it, sow your tithe according to the word of God, then you are more than welcome. Other than that, if you just like to sow us a sacrificial seed, then we would appreciate it. As you can see, God has been blessing us and uh, we have ministry to do, and so we appreciate whatever you can do. So until next time, until you tune in next time, thank you and be blessed.